Okay, folks, we're in Titus 1.10 today. And as we begin, it says that there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Now, right off the bat, I notice the volume of people that are doing this stuff. And that would be many. The Bible talks many times about the many. Vain, I want to highlight that word right off the bat. Empty, senseless, or idle. We're going to discuss this word idle today. And so, and this is Paul writing to Titus, and he said their mouths must be stopped who subvert whole houses. The word subvert means to overthrow, overturn. Teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Oh, well, that just drained the swamp as far as the preaching pool. That took about 90 plus percent out of the preaching pool. I've never seen, uh, for fil filthy lucre's sake, money hung hungry, grubbing, money hungry people today as the so called people in the pulpits preaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Yikes. And one of their own people, a prophet, said the Cretans are always liars, evil be slow bellies. Slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables, commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess they know that they know God, but in works they deny it. Being disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. That word reprobate means unapproved. Reject it. Wow. They profess to know God in works. What are they actively works? What labor? What are they actively employed in? Is are they doers of the word? Is what we're going to concentrate on today. And not just hearers only, Romans 2.13. Not the hearers of the law are just, but the doers shall be justified. Keep that in mind, folks. Is this real to you? Are you actually living this, or is this just some ritual that you go through? Because that's going to make or break whether you make it home. And even if you go back in a little bit ways in your Bible in 2 Timothy 214, it talks about, of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. So here we go again. And why are they doing this thing? Because they didn't study to show themselves approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Not only those that are preaching these things, these vain, what I call religious doctrines, but the people that are supporting it. You need to really be watchful of what you're supporting and what you say amen to. Because as you see, and as we will continue to see, many aren't going the right way. Many aren't preaching truth. Well, they're not living it. They talk. There's a lot of talk out there. And even in, uh, where was I looking here earlier? I saw the word many again, uh, Philippians 3.18. Many a walk of whom I've told you often and now tell you weeping. They are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. It's Philippians 3.18 and that many. They're, there's the volume of people. Who do, they're not living. It's idle. They're not practicing what they preach. And there's a word for that. It's called hypocrites. If you go back into Matthew, I got to decide which part of Matthew I want to go to here. Let's go to Matthew 7, 21. We're going to talk again about the many. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of the Father, of my Father which is in heaven, that he does. You have to be a doer. Uh, James talks about that. As the body, James 2.26, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. If you're not a doer, 
your DOA. It's a toe tag. You're not going to make it. You're dead on arrival when you get to the kingdom, as you're going to find out here. Many, oh, there's that volume of people again. How, what, what volume of people are doing this stuff? Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and thy name have cast out devils, and thy name have done many wonderful works. Oh, did you see that, Lord? Look what we did. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. So they claim to know the Lord. They said that. They professed to know God. We know God. That There's so much of that out there today. So much religious nonsense. Oh, we know God. Yeah, hallelujah. But the question is, does he know you? Is it personal? Is there a real relationship going? Are you a doer? And he's telling them, depart from me, you that work in equity. Yeah. Or as Solomon wrote in, his, in Ecclesiastes, vanity, vanity. It was all vanity. Empty, vain, idle. And then he goes on, and if you read 24 on, it talks about hearing the sayings in mind and doing them. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock, which the rock we built, our foundation, is Christ. Obviously, they didn't know the Lord. They didn't know his, they didn't know the Son, or therefore they couldn't know the Father. They didn't know the Father, they didn't know the Son. And they built their foundation on sand. Idle words, idle words, idle people teach idle words. They're not doers. They're hearers only. Now, if we continue in Matthew, and I'm looking at Matthew 12, 33, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Remember, the Bible talks about the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, things you won't find in the realm of the flesh. They're not available. They're not there. A tree is known by spirit. Oh, generation of vipers, how can you be an evil? Speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Listen to the doctrines today. And it's, they are the world, therefore speak they of the world. That's all they are, worldly doctrines. Things that promote uh, a feel good, which Philippian, the book Paul wrote to the Philippians, their God is their belly. It's what feels good. It's kind of like watching people, when they, when, when you do, when they advertise health products, they don't show people that are sickly or out of shape. Or, no, they show young, they show healthy, vibrant people that practice what they preach because they want to sell you that product. They want you to be healthy and vibrant. And they, and that's the kind of people they advertise. Well, folks, think about this. When you hire a handyman, are you going to hire somebody unqualified? Or when they advertise on their webpage? And how many people have been scammed by plumbers? Roofers, carpenters, I mean, we can go on. Mechanics, their webpage says they're going to do this and they can do that. And oh, then their prices and they give testimony. Well, one of two things happens. Either you're satisfied and you got a good deal or you got scammed. Well, the scammers don't make it because they didn't do what they professed. Verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the good treasure brings forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word, that word idle, again, useless, unemployed. And it's referring to deed or doing. Are you doing what you're saying? That's where the power is. That's where you they can teach as one that has authority. Our Lord was described... And as one that was mighty in deed and in truth. And you'll find that in Luke. Uh, I got that wrote down here, I'm sure. But as in deed and in truth, 2419 of Luke. And Paul talked to the people in 1 Corinthians 4, 19 through 20. I don't want to know the speech of you people. I don't care to hear what you have to say so much. But I want to see what you know. What's your demonstration? What are you living in demonstration of the spirit and power. And even 1 John 3.18 talks about, let us not love in tongue, but in deed and in truth. It's about what you do. It's not what you say, folks. It's what you do. That's going to get you home. You just saw that in Matthew. These many people were preaching many doctrine, many what they thought was impressing the Lord, only to find out. Game over. 
Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account of in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, by your words thou shalt be contempt, condemned. Remember, we just talked about in Romans. Not the hearers, but the doers shall be justified. So an idle word would be something that you're not actually living. An idle word is something they might preach. And I I see this all the time, these pastors. Oh, you got to live by faith. You got to live by faith. And then they turn around and say, oh, we're so supported solely by your contribution. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> which one is it? Are you trusting the Lord yourself? Now, granted, I know uh, I got questioned a while ago. Well, does that mean we shouldn't support the pastor? Yes, you should support the pastor. That's not what I'm saying. The point is, are they living by faith? Are they doing what they say they're doing? And I've watched so much of this stuff where these people are just fleecing the flocks. They're not to serve. A, a minister is a servant, not to be served. He's not up there to live high off. The, he's the one that's supposed to serve and lead by example. If he doesn't, he's not going to make it. We just read that in Matthew 7. So idle words are unemployed. The words that are, are not actually working. It's things that you're not actually doing. Well, they have a name for that. It's called a hypocrite. And it's called a liar. And if you look in the book of Revelation, it tells you that the liars, they don't make it. They don't get there. They get turned away at the door. And folks, I'll tell you what, what a hell of a surprise to find out that you didn't make it, even though you, oh, we prophesied. How many people have we prophesied? We've done all these wonderful works. Idle. You have to give account of all that. The Lord's going to hold you and say, wait a minute. I know you profess to know me, but in works you denied me. So you know what? You denied me before men. What does the Bible say? Well, I deny you before my Father in heaven. <laughs> it came over. It's that simple. So not only do, and, and you know, idle words are, are, are words. You know, I, I don't get this where Christians go, oh, good luck. I wish you luck. Where does luck fit in? You're, you're either blessed under the blessing or it's a curse where does luck you know come on but dead idle useless words that we just throw out there haphazard but it's not only words it's your deeds are you that man of god are you the go-to guy that the lord says is are you approved of god because you're going to find that the more you're approved of the lord the less man is going to you're, you're not going to get your a high approval rating from mankind and there's a couple of her and uh, i think it's 2 corinthians 4 1 here which is kind of interesting one of the requirements of a christian is having renounced the hidden things of darkness uh okay therefore we have this ministry as we receive mercy we fate not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by a manifestation of the truth. Now that means you're living it. You're an example of the believers. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So there's things that man doesn't see, but God sees. He sees right through you. All things are naked and open unto the eyes of him that we are dealing with. God sees right through you. Why, why pretend? Why do the dance, folks? Why sit there and do things that you know aren't right? It's not hidden from God. He sees right through you. He knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. Ezekiel 33. And this sounds <laughs> so familiar today. Ezekiel 33, 31. And they come unto thee as the people comes. They sit before thee as my people. And they hear their words. Oh, they sound great. They'll hallelujah. They raised their hands up in the air. And they shall, oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah. But they will not do them. For their mouth, they show much love. But their heart goes after their, their covetousness. Uh -oh. There we go. There's We talked earlier about subverting whole houses, uh, preaching for filthy lucre's sake. And lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear the words, but they do them not. Well, this sounds like some of the, what they call praise and worship today. The Bible says we're to worship in spirit and in truth. It doesn't say you have to have guitars, loud guitars and gaudy music and a big light show to worship the Lord. 
and this stuff where they're sitting there waving at the ceiling in a trance, thinking that's praise and worship. What's the rest of their life like? Are they actually doers or just hearers only? If they're not, it's idle. Remember years ago, there was a show, I don't know if it's still on, it's called American Idol, where many people would try out to be a star someday, but only few were chosen. Only few actually had the talent. Few could continue on and would actually make a career out of it. Well, it's the same thing with the Lord. Many are called. Few are chosen. Let's go back to Samuel and we can close here. It's interesting, the prophet Samuel. And he was quite a guy. Samuel, 1 Samuel 9, 6. Quite a prophet. Uh, well respected. First with God and then man. In 1 Samuel, I'll start 9, 5. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come, let us return. Let my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us. So he was out there looking for the donkeys that were had, or the asses that had escaped and, and ran away. And, that, and then they went looking for the man of God. And he, and he said unto him, Behold, now there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. And all that he says comes surely to pass. Now let us go there and peradventure. He can show us our way that we should go. Let me ask you something, folks. Have you studied to show yourself approved unto God? Are you considered honorable in the sight of God first? Then, man, have you got the order correct? If you don't, then you're just a hearer, not a doer. It's idle, vain. And folks, you do not want to get turned away at the doorstep. So that message that they preached in Titus and the people went hallelujah, wow, or what we saw in Ezekiel, that may have man, made it to man's radar. But when it came time to give account of your life in Matthew 7, Matthew 12, it just turned out to be empty and vain. It did not pass the Lord's standard. God bless and keep the faith.